delighted to be joined by Dale and the Swing Folk. Hey! hey. Lads, how's it going? Good, man. Thank yeah. you very much for having us. And uh, you're very welcome to our album launch. <laughs> you're very welcome to our album launch. <laughs> Thank you very much. I feel so privileged. And uh, we, have the, we have the champagne here ready. Yeah, ready to tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ready to tell. Uh, almost a spontaneous combustion in there a little while back. Yeah, but... and there's the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> we survived it, but it's okay. <laughs> so moving on. Um, so you have the uh, album launch. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But um, how long has Day Out and the Swing Folk been playing? Well, uh, Day on the Swing Folk, I guess, has been about three, four years, maybe. I was Day out on my own for a while, and then I kind of had a band and felt the need to have a band, but then the band disbanded. <laughs> so I was left with the name Day on the Swing Folk, which is better than Day out. I think the Swing Folk sounds good. It actually just describes the music yeah. very well. So, uh, so yeah, Day on, so kind of Darren, Darren is there. So, we're, I mean, at some point in the future, there will be a band again, I guess, if we, if we decide... We're gonna go touring or something like that. We definitely yeah. have a band if someone backs us to do that. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's that would be the thing. But you know, it is. It, there's there's a full sound, a full band sound on the album, and it'd be it'd be wrong to just to, to kind of claim uh, that as just a solo project because yeah. it, I may have to mention Peter Smith, who played double bass and saxophone on the album, and he did an absolutely outstanding and uh, you know, uh, incredibly sincere job for a guy who didn't take any money. Yeah, you know, he just came in and did it because he was interested in doing it. So I have to mention Kieran and I, or not, uh, Peter, and I have to mention Kieran, who I did pay. He did play, <laughs> but he's he's a top session player. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, uh, renowned uh, musicians um, request Kieran services when they come visit in Ireland yeah. and stuff like that. So uh, Kieran also plays sax and clarinet. So between I suppose the, the three of us, and then now Darren helped me out. Now there's always been other people there, and there's always been a band there. And I have to mention Tris. Tris Dalton from One Four Seven Studios, without Excellent. without who's helped us, it absolutely wouldn't have happened, and uh, and it, it really it really does sound good, and, and all because of him, and I learned so much from him over the last what five six years, so so Tris Dalton, top man. Excellent. Yeah. So you were saying there, you, um, you had someone there to play the double bass. Yeah. I say, what was, was it difficult to find a double bass? Yeah, there? and there's, there's a there's I have a great story and kind of a sad story too behind it. Um, you remember the tsunami uh, in, in Thailand and, and India and all that, and yeah. friends of mine were, were, there was a load of benefit stuff going on to send money over, and uh, a girlfriend of mine, as in a female friend, was, was running some card reading night, and I said, right, I'll support it. I was the I was token bloke, I was the only bloke there, right, and there was a cackle of girls, you know. And one lady no that, problem with that. No right. problem at all. <laughs> at all with that. You know, after about two hours at right, I think I'll go and get a point of Guinness and, and, and watch some football or something, you know. <laughs> uh, but Mar uh, Margaret Smith, uh, God rest her soul, was there. It was Peter's mother. And uh, we, I was talking to Margaret and she was uh, telling me that her son played double bass. And I was telling her all about She'd heard that I played music and I was into jazz and stuff like that. And, and, uh, and she said, well, what kind of a band are you looking for? I said, I'd love to have a double bass player. So my son plays double bass. Yeah. And Margaret has since, has since passed on, and uh, that was about, ooh, I suppose, six, seven years ago. I don't know when the tsunami was. It was about six, seven years ago, was it? about that, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, such things, paths just cross yeah. and, and stuff happened, and I made a phone call, and Pierce says, well, send me your stuff, and I sent them, I mean, I had a four-track nonsense recording of some stuff, yeah. and he was just, Jesus, this is interesting stuff for me, so I said, look, I've got lots more stuff. How's about coming in when I have, when I have, Put down some tracks properly. Said absolutely, and he came in. He just did a stand-up job. Like it was great. Excellent. So I mean, it was brilliant. Like, and I, I mean, I, if, and I will be doing a second album, and I will ask Peter to to do it again. He's just he has two kids now, mm -hmm. and has a, a, a pretty serious job in the Irish Times, and so just seriously doesn't have the time to be gigging and rehearsing and yeah. stuff like that. And I totally understand it. But for about two and a half years, we had, we had a great thing going. Yeah, so it's got, so if you were to do stuff in the future, it's kind of tough to sort of work around the will be now. With yeah, but then it's it's, it's 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 no harm then to, to look for another bass player and see what the sound of an electric bass would be like and see how mm -hmm. that would change things. And, and yeah. Because you need to change up as well, you know, I need to develop as well. But I would definitely ask Peter first because the sound, I mean, if you've listened to the album, if you do listen to the album, which you can on Bandcamp. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, for free, um, it, the 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 tone of a, of a double bass just it just adds it just uh, 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 the amount of class that it adds to, to to a recording is just I don't know 
it's immeasurable to be honest with you yeah. and it just gives it that real organic jazzy feel you know yeah and uh, it just it sounds great like and i'm real proud of it and, like i'm real proud of him for his efforts so Excellent. yeah well then do you mind just uh, giving us a little sample and playing the track absolutely yeah 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 this is uh this is the title track from uh our debut album which is called for whom do you do okay <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna use my metronome so my nerves don't get to burn me and I play too fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. Waiting for sunset when skylight throws life at us all. Watching their worlds go by, wondering if they see it all. A bright orange desert hangs, see about the flea. The traffic jam crawls on and leads me to my liberty. Yeah. Misunderstanding me, prejudging accordingly. Finding your wallet cannot think independently And of this vision unfolding for me And love with a moment that your eyes will just never see Yeah And it's time to embrace those questions of old Like you've never before Who are you? Whom do you do all this for? Yeah Just to show us to feel that you know you are here Your cold-hearted exchange exhibits your deep in fears Will you break your cycle of program belief? Will you find an answer? Whom do you do all this for? Will you break your cycle of program belief? Will you find an answer? For whom do you do all this? Whom do you do all this for? Thank you very much. Excellent. Thanks. And we saw... Uh Got a little bit there, Darren. Just before, just during the song, I think you were a bit scared there with the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> just had to be frozen still there for a sec. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> you did well. <laughs> They're more scared of you than you are, Darren. It's got over this. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we'll get talking about the album. Um, you played the title track there mm. for for whom do you do? For whom do you do? Um, yeah. Where did you come up for uh, for the name of the album? Well, I guess there's a. Uh, I started writing a whole bunch of songs. Um, Basically, uh, analysing the society we live in, I guess, would be the common theme with a lot of songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a sociology uh, graduate, you know, mm -hmm. so I have uh, the critical head in my shoulders, you know. <laughs> and I guess I'm a bit of an anti-capitalist, to be honest, uh, and, and I don't like the way our society is uh, being manipulated and the way... Um, huge you know wedges of of, of inequality are driven okay. in, in, you know and they were there before the period of auster austerity this, this is this is capitalist society yeah. so it's it's kind of my observation of the kind of uh, the macro kind of or the, the micro kind of results of, of of a society like that that sees people stuck in traffic jams every day mm -hmm. you know just there's, there's no need for people i mean with proper planning for example there would be no need for people to be stuck in 10 miles of, of traffic jams on their way that you're crawling away to blanchestown or two from blanchestown every day where there's yeah. way too many people for such a small place etc mm -hmm. etc yeah and this design for life so for whom do you do ask a very basic question you know yeah. well why do you do the things you do who whose box are you ticking are you actually ticking your own boxes so it's it's songs in that vein 
Okay. So it's it's quite philosophical, I suppose. Yeah. But these are the things that uh, trouble me at night. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite in depth. So I guess. Um, so would you be saying then the album's kind of a bit of like of a journey? Uh, to, to, to a certain looking. extent but then you know there's other themes in the album there's definitely four or five songs that fit into what I've just described there but then there's mm-hmm. others there's, others, there's songs of loss and love as well that are there too you know yeah. and I guess uh, from any experience that I have I, I always try and learn something from it even if it's you know getting dumped or whatever it is you know mm-hmm. or dumping someone or whatever you know yeah. and, and these kind of experiences but they're, you know, they're, they're experiences of, of, of the heart or whatever and I just try and learn something from it so that you know you, you learn better for the next time or whatever it is and you know I just write about the things that are on my mind or are you know in my heart or whatever it is and on a particular day there's no definite plan you know obviously that that kind of more philosophical stuff is, is always you know with this, you know, an analytical head on me, and and I mean, I'm a disadvantaged, te- a disadvantaged uh, kids teacher, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm I'm always thinking in terms of their needs, and yeah. so I see how things are so unfair all the time. So it's easy just to write from that perspective, if you know what I mean. That's yeah. just that's just what I see, you know. So so just like everyday life. So yeah. what you do now at the moment is just really sort of great motivation, um, not motivation, inspiration yeah. for getting music. And I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure you actually have probably loads more than <coughs> well, I do. Yeah, I do. Uh, just an awful lot. I mean, uh, you know, I, I mentioned what I was talking to you earlier. My father died two years ago. I mean, yeah. Jesus, there was a whole lot of healing to be done and a whole lot of grieving to be done. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just took a guitar out and, and off I went with it. And yeah. uh, I just took a harmonica in my mouth and off I went with it and played piano and just and just wrote and and performed uh, and and you know. Uh, made new music and and healed myself and yeah. you know and it was a, it was a really great uh, and sad but it was great to get through it in such a creative way and and mm-hmm. uh, I guess music is something that I have to I, I'm I'm just compelled to do yeah for for very real reasons because you know it's a, it's you know life is heavy yeah <laughs> life's heavy sometimes you know yeah. it seems like it's a great way to like channel sort of frustrations or any sort of uh, absolutely put it into absolutely music and... I mean if you don't uh, I mean, personally if, if I don't if I would say to let my father's death go without having to deal with it. I mean, I, I wouldn't be sitting here, mm. I'd be, you know, I'd be sticking needles in my arm or something like that. Or you know what I mean? I mean, it's, I, I yeah. have to, I have to deal with it, and I have to deal with it in a positive way. Yeah, and it's the only way I have. You know, yeah. that's it. And um, but you were telling me as well, um, <laughs> because uh, you are a teacher, mm. um, getting the time to record this album mm. was difficult. So yeah. um, you were telling me what is it? A little, a couple of years anyway. Yeah, I was basically chipping going. away for for about, I guess, five years. You know, and. Um, that's just the way it was. I mean, while you know I was a secondary school teacher, uh, and sure, there's four and a half months off a year. Um, it's hard just to just switch. It's not hard to just switch into doing something else, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I found that when I mean I wrote most of this album when I was working part time. Yeah. Before I started working full time, and I got really frustrated working full time because I had no energy. I had no emotional energy for it, mm-hmm. even during the summer, because you have to immerse yourself in it. Like anything you do, you have to immerse yourself in it, and and then suddenly there is a switch. Yeah, and it doesn't take much to be able to write and be creative with it. But if you're work, I mean, if Monday to Friday and then your your Saturday, you just all you want to do is just chill out and like you just have no energy for it and no time for it, and you don't even want to think of it because mm-hmm. it just becomes another pressure almost, you know. So at the moment, I'm I'm working for myself and working part time, so it's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. So now I have time, and I'm I'm very happy actually to do to be doing it uh, at the moment, you know. And, and looking forward to a, a good productive summer as well. Like, so yeah. it should be good. I, I what should I heard Dale's album? It was funny how, how we came across yeah. it. Like yeah. we, funny enough, we knew each other from years ago from playing football and and music and music. And yeah, music but football. But well. you were only a drummer back then. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, only a drummer. <laughs> yeah, but um, you were still shy. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we we met up at um, one of our football reunions, and mm. I, I knew you were doing music and yeah, all that. Yeah. And but I didn't realise you had the album recorded, mm. so. Maybe just organised, you gave me a copy of the album, and I can say, obviously, because I wasn't involved with the whole, I just could not believe he had sat on this album for yeah. so long mm-hmm. and done nothing with it. Because I literally I got it home and I put it on, and my own brother now would be involved in music, listen to it, and says, like, that has to be out there. Like, mm-hmm. It really does, like, you know, like, it's too good, yeah, you know, to just be sitting on, you know. So I think it's been, it's been a quick. Two months or so, two, three yeah, months, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But I just it's hard doing it on your own and definitely I need somebody to give me a kick in the hole and Darren can do that and that's grand, you know, and we can help each other out because yeah. Darren Darren is uh, you're you're a qualified sound engineer but you still need to gain experience and oh, all that and, and I have a lot of experience at being in the studio so I know how to maximize and then we, we have other expertise just a phone call away if we get yeah. stuck. 
So it's even grand, you're able to bounce off each other. Exactly, no exactly. So, so we're going, we're going for album yeah. number two now. Like, so we started recording it already. Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. pretty much written. So, so yeah, it's cool. So it's all, yeah. all good, you know. Well, sure. Where was um the? You were saying it was it was was it one four seven studios? One four seven studios. Tris Dalton. Um, yeah, well, I, they had a. I think they had a website, but I'm not sure. I, they, they may well be uh, changing premises soon. I'm not sure what's going on at the moment. But they used to be in Barrow Street and then at Jamestown Road Studios in Inchy Car, and I think they're currently of no particular abode. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, loads. Of, I mean, loads of great bands. I mean, I'm sure you've come across some of the guys who played Knock and Stocking and all that. And, yeah. uh, you know, and a lot of those bands, like the you know the Sprockets and all those guys, have recorded in One Four Seven. So they'd all know mm-hmm. Tris and. You know, he's he's well renowned as being a very, very good engineer and a very, very good producer. Yeah, yeah. You know, we and, we've had the name mentioned a few times, especially on the show. He yeah, is, uh, he's he's well known. You know, he is, and he's very, very passionate, and uh, he gives way too much of his time for his own <laughs> business good. Yeah. You know, he should be charging more for the amount of effort he puts in, but he doesn't because he's a gym. <laughs> you know, that's that. Like he's great. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so do you want to just give us another track? Yeah, sure. Okay. I, oh, geez, just said to me, I, talk away for a minute because it takes me a second to tune up. <laughs> well, sure, if anybody wants to uh, text in just before the end of the show, they can. It's uh, 87 500 Let us know what you think of uh, Dale and the Swing Folk. And um, if you have a question that you'd like to ask them, uh, shall I bladder on a bit more or are you ready? Oh, I'm just, a, just <laughs> about ready now. So, shall I introduce it? Um, if you don't mind, please. This is... Uh, I'll try, it's, I think it's track number six on the album. It's called Getting Me Down. And this is a song about me making myself depressed. <laughs> Which wouldn't be hard to do with a head and like that. Huh? Okay, so. Getting Me Down. And this is this is quite a jazzy tune. Uh, you ready, so? Yeah, are you ready? Oh. Sometimes when I'm thinking this over I feel I've come undone The more I think this way I cannot see The right way's gone Thinking it over and I'm spinning around Feeling lousy cause I can't be found Can't see it happens to me when I have got me down Well, it seems it's too far gone for me to change somehow. Past years I've met a disaster and now I call it so. Thinking it over and spinning around. Feeling so for with my heart on the ground. Can't see it happens to me when I have got me down. Lessons to learn, you think I would And I press the self-destruct button And now escape is good Feeling it over and spinning around Feeling lousy now, I've got me down Can't see the day when the light that shines on Won't be found One day, dream it's all gonna away But I'm there, looking for nothing Someday I'll be dreaming away And I'm there Get me down again And I'm there Get me down again And I'm there Get me down and yeah, there Get me down and yeah, I'm there Get me down yeah I'm there Get me down Get me down Thanks for that. No problem. 
Um, so, for where can people buy For Whom Do You Do? They can buy it at Bandcamp. If they type in uh, Deo and the Swing Folk, uh, .bandcamp.com, they can listen for free and they can buy it for eight ninety nine or more. <laughs> 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 if they want, they can. Yeah. They and um, do, you have, uh, do you have many gigs lined up now just to try and uh, sell you a bit more now? Uh, I'm going to do a uh, um, local uh, pub in Blanchestown called The Council in uh, on the June Bank Holiday weekend. Just an hour, Sunday night, yeah, 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 Sunday night, uh, just an, an hour slot. And I'm just gonna plug, uh, just plug the album, plug, plug the 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 website, or plug the band camp on the on the album, and probably sell a few demos or something like that as well. Just trying yeah. to make a few bob, you know what I mean? I sure bring a few along. You never know. Bring exactly. A few, exactly. Yeah, bring a few along and see see what the story is. And that's it. Just get it out there a little bit more. And um, for those who the, the crowd that would go there wouldn't be Facebookers. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't be interneters at all, and and okay. they would probably people who would buy hard copies. So we have to do, you know, tick that box too, don't we? Yeah. Jesus. Which means paying for print and all that. Paying the arse, like so costly, like you know what yeah. I mean? Because there's no point in like getting ten thousand CDs printed. You're not going to sell them, like you know. Exactly. You might sell a thousand in five years. Mm -hmm. You might. Yeah. You know, unless you get some deal off someone, but on your, you know, and you, it's just really expensive to do the thing. So doing it online is the easiest way to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just the most cost-effective way. You know, because I'm bleeding skinned. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm seriously skinned. Like, you know. Um, so if anyone wants to give me money, give me money. Lovely. Thanks so much. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'll write your song. <laughs> yeah, commission songs, lads. You know, you can, you know, I'll write your song. Ain't you want? I don't care if it's for your cheesy wedding. I'll write your song. Five thousand quid. Five thousand quid for a song. No problem. Right. There you go. Now you've heard it first. There's a first on, <laughs> on the sessions there. <laughs> so, um, Sterling. For, so for people who aren't aware, could you? Uh, do you have a, a Facebook? Mm. Do you have a Facebook? I do. Yeah. So Dio and the Swing Folk, uh, Facebook, and it's and the Swing Folk. It's all one word, but it doesn't matter. Dio and the Swing Folk. You'll get it. Yeah. On Facebook, and send me a friend request, and I'll, I'll gladly send you links and say hello and all that kind of stuff. And you get all the links to the bank all, camp exactly. and everything. Where all you that stuff will be there. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Absolutely. Well then, uh, before we let you go, we have to ask you the two cheesy questions that we ask every band. Okay. I pre-warned you about this, so I'll be thinking yeah. about decent answers now. All right, come on. Jeez, I haven't actually. Let's see what happens. Let's see what comes out. I don't know. Um, so, first question is, um, you're going to Desert Island, and you get one of those little iPod shuffles. You know, you can only hold one album. Yeah. So, basically, what album would you bring? Dark Side of the Moon. Okay. Dark Side of the Moon. There you go. Shout Straight off. I was going to give you stipulations, but that's fine. No, 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 Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs> as, as, I think it's the best album. Uh, I'm not a huge Pink Floyd fan, but that's just yeah. the best album I've ever heard as a complete piece of work from start to finish. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely magnificent. I have it on vinyl at home. It's brilliant. Excellent. I love it. I love coming home half slosh and just sticking on. It's great. Like, <laughs> yeah. I love those quick hands. You just know straight away. Uh, brilliant. Uh, but, uh, if, if you said one album, if you said, if you had to said, you know, ten albums, then I'd be, I'd be, I'd be civil war in my head. I wouldn't know what to bring. If you said one <laughs> album, I know what I'm bringing. And then Darren, do you know yours straight off? I do. Yeah, and it's um, <coughs> an old '90s indie band called Gene, and it's drawn to the deep end, which would be sort of soundtrack in my '90s and sort of side there. So that'd be, that'd be the one for me. Who are they? That's it, Gene. Gene? Gene, yeah. I've never heard of them. Just, you, you didn't even hear of Lisa Hannigan. Uh, true, true. <laughs> true. I think, actually, I think that's the first time we've had um, Gene mentioned on the show, so... It's good, it's a good choice. Yeah, that's good, blame, choice. Yeah. good choice, good choice. They're probably shit, but you know. <laughs> um, so the second um, question is, if you... Uh, like you said, you're going to record your new album now. Yeah. If you could get anyone at all to record a, a, a song with you who who would you pick Peter Smith double bass Peter Smith double, double bass that's it that's it <laughs> that's it that's, that's grand keep it nice and local that's yeah. the way you want well, it no, he's just, <laughs> it, it worked he works a charm it's brilliant like, he's the most yeah. easiest guy in the world to work with Like, here's the tune tell you what you play your ass off okay so, says he and off he goes you know, we did what like we were in a tiny studio in Barrow Street and he did 36 takes in a row Okay, there was nine tunes, four for each song, in a mm -hmm. row, and it was baking in there, right? Mm -hmm. And in between takes, we just opened the door and put a fan in for a minute, closed the door, and left it back, <laughs> go again. You know, honest yeah. to God, and everyone the perfect. Excellent. Everyone the perfect, and we recorded mm -hmm. them in one day. Okay. It was absolutely phenomenal stuff, like, you know what I mean? And that was just him, so he expected that of himself. It wasn't even yeah. me saying, this is what you have to do. I yeah. was happy that he would have done three or four songs that day. The whole nine of them were done, like. It's absolutely class, so I, I, no hesitation. Peter Smith again. Dedication, that's absolutely. what you want. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Darren? Um, and this isn't cheesy now, but I, like, <laughs> I'm, um, I do my own stuff, like writing at home and yeah. all that. And I, But if I was to have a vocalist, you know, to be 
toss up between Jerry Fish and Dale here now. Was I even? Well, I'm only saying that. You <laughs> saying that because I gave you champagne? You're cheesy gear. I'm only saying that because he hasn't paid me yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, yeah, because he can throw his voice around to Andrew, like so. Thanks very much, man. Excellent. We're liking the answers, just keeping keeping it all in the family, keeping it local. I just want, I'll like keep the race reasonable as well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're fast going up to the end of the show. Um, do you mind playing playing us out tonight? I'll Listen play it absolutely, song? absolutely. Cheers. Uh, I'll play it quick. This is called uh, "I Gotta Go." How, how apt? <laughs> how appropriate? Very exactly. Nice. <laughs> Actually, uh, just to mention the fact also that we have a video online. We recorded, oh, we, yeah. we made a video on Saturday and we put it online last night. So if you go to YouTube and put Dale and the Swing Folk or just put Swing Folk in. Yeah. Right, Dale and the Swing Folk and it's a tune called Doing All Right. And it, uh, it looks good. So that one as well. I forgot to plug that earlier. Right? Cheers, thanks. All so right, it's... all right. So. Tell me if I show my fears I gotta know before I go And it seems I cannot help to be without No dreams So I dream to figure out If you're What you think I'd like to know So please Won't you tell me if you go With me What about the dreams I fear Will you go And if you find me insincere And I know Here I go again Thinking I can't win With these feelings I've got to go I don't mean to cast it down For you Can a shadow be rubbed out Are you Gonna be there if I fall For real I want to tell me what you think Swingfolk.bandcamp.com <laughs> <laughs>